digitally zoom in on your face. So. Yes. Five, four, three, two. Welcome to Meet the Court. I'm your host, Jawad Johnson. Meet the Court is brought to you as a public service by the Superior Court of New Jersey in Atlantic and Cape May counties, as well as the Cape May Technical High School to better inform you, the public, on the workings of the court and the role of the judiciary in our communities. Today's topic, jury service. It's important to our society. Our guests, the jury management team, Janice Headley. Good morning, Jawad. Ray Slojinski. Good morning. And Stephanie De Jesus Vasquez. Good morning. Good morning. So, we're talking about jury and its importance to our society. Ray, what can you tell us about the history of jury uh, service in the United States of America? Well, the, the uh, United States jury system and our system dates back over 200 years to colonial times and is discussed in the Declaration of Independence. The right to a jury trial is guaranteed by the Sixth and Seventh Amendments of the United States Constitu Constitution and under Article I of the New Jersey Constitution. It is both a privilege and an honor, as well as our duty to participate in our judicial process. Although we recognize that serving as a juror may be inconvenient at times, it is important to the process that the pool of prospective jurors be diverse and represent the community. So where do you get some of the names of the people who may be summoned for jury duty? We obtain the names from three different sources. Those sources are registered voters, licensed drivers, filers of state gross income tax, and filers of homestead rebate application forms. This list is handled and maintained by the administrative office of the Courts of Trenton. So, Janice, I understand that there are two types of juries. Uh, can you tell me the difference between a pettit jury and a grand jury? Certainly. There are more than two types of juries, but we'll just discuss grand and pettit. Okay. A pettit jury is um, named, well, both names have their origin in the French language. Pettit meaning small, grand meaning large. For a grand jury, we select 23 jurors, 12 of which create a quorum, and they are used in order to decide if there's sufficient evidence to hold somebody, um, to indict somebody so that they may eventually go to trial. A pettit jury, there's criminal and civil pettit juries. In pettit means small. In a pettit jury, there are 14 selected for a criminal case, sometimes 16, but only 12 will, will deliberate to a verdict. The others are alternates. <laughs> And in a civil case, there's six to eight jurors, and sometimes all of them deliberate to a verdict, other times only some of them, only six of them deliberate to a verdict. Wow. So Ray, how often can you be summoned as a juror? Prospective jurors can be summoned once every three years for service as a pettit, a state grant, or a local grant. Keeping in mind that the uh, Federal grand jury is separate and distinct from our jury system, and it does not apply to the time frames of the pettit or grand juries. So I've got an emergency going on at the house. Am I exempt from jury service? And if not, who is? Very few reasons exempt you from jury service. If you have an emergency going on and you're scheduled for jury service, you can contact the jury office and we work with you and we can postpone or defer your jury service to a time that is more convenient for you, not to put you in un under any undue stress. Uh, there are excuses that can be listed on the jury summons. There are several excuses that you can apply for at the time when you register for a jury service. And just to segue off of that, if you are requesting an excuse, it's very important that you provide us with documentation. It can't be done over the telephone. You must send in your jury summons accompanied by the documentation that would be ex 
excusing you. It is a foundational duty of our American society, you're right. Yes. So we should be making sure that we have appropriate documentation. Yeah. Yes. So you talked about the French origins, um, and there's a word that uh, people have heard maybe in movies, uh, my cousin Vinny. What is a voir dire? Voir dire simply means tell the truth, to speak the truth. And voir dire happens once you go to a courtroom. A judge will ask the entire veneer a question, uh, several questions, that help the attorneys and the judges learn more about each prospective juror. There are no right or wrong answers in voir dire. They um, simply ask that you speak the truth. And if you have something private that you need to discuss, you can always ask to approach, approach the bench. There's no reason for you to have to speak it out in public. Ray, how long do I have to stay on the jury if I'm required to serve? The instructions for the, your length of jury service is clearly printed on your summons. Um, please make sure that you read these instructions carefully. Because usually they give you maybe a day, but it's usually the length of a trial, jury trial. Janice, when I report for petty juror, service, what happens? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is your summons is likely going to direct you to call after 5.30 p.m. the night before your service or to check our online site. And then you will report to the courthouse. You will be asked to go through security. You'll go through security and the sheriff's officers are, will help you find the jury management office. There are signs clearly indicating where it is. You'll then check in with the jury management office. A, um, we also ask that you bring your summons when you arrive. It makes check-in a lot easier. Then you'll proceed into the jury assembly room where the jury, a member of the jury management staff or myself and a superior court judge will orient you, will tell you what to expect, will ask you um, to keep to review the voir dire, but to keep your questions or your answers to yourself, not to talk about them with your neighbor. We will then wait for chambers to call. At that time, we will proceed to the courtroom. We ask that you would silence all electronic devices, remove your hats, we'll go into the courtroom, the judge will begin the voir dire process, a jury, um, the, the attorneys will exercise their peremptory strikes, which the number that they get is according to the court law, court rule, I'm sorry. And um, a jury, a satisfactory jury will eventually be impaneled. We'll take them downstairs and back into the jury assembly room, tell them what to expect, give them different badges. And um, the j trial judge will tell them how long they can expect to be there. This is Meet the Court. I'm your host, Jawad Johnson. We'll be back with Janice, Ray, and Stephanie after this message. All right. Five, four, three, two. Welcome back to Meet the Court. I'm your host, Jawad Johnson. We're here today with members of the Vicinage One jury management team, Janice, Ray, and Stephanie. We're discussing jury service and its overall benefit to the community. So Janice, you told us about petit service. Now tell us about grand jury service. Well, grand jury service is a lot less formal than petit jury service. There, a judge is not present. Um, it is the prosecutor, the witness, the clerk to the grand jury. In Atlantic County, we have three separate grand jury panels going at all times. And in Cape May County, there is one grand jury panel. They meet for approximately eight to 10 weeks, one day a week. The, there is a floor person that is a member of the jury that handles the proceedings. And um, it's important to remember that when the grand jury returns an indictment, that does not mean that the defendant is guilty. It simply means that there was enough yeah. evidence for them to hold, to, for, them, for the case to proceed. So it sounds like our jurors are very important to the process. Stephanie, do you work with the Sheriff's Department regarding security concerns? The Sheriff's Department is in charge with the day-to-day -day security 
based on the judiciary model court security plan to keep our judiciary staff informed on the policies, our operation managers meet regularly with the sheriff department in order to address security concerns. Okay. So, so there are any misunderstandings with jurors. What items should they not bring into the courthouse with them? It goes without saying that weapons are not permitted in the courthouses. In addition, don't bring any liquid beverages. Dress code business casual is recommended. And just to segue on that, um, we talked about the things that you can't bring, but there are things you can bring. You can bring electronic devices. In fact, devices. In fact, we recommend that you bring a magazine, a book, because sometimes there is waiting. We don't like to keep you waiting, but we want to make sure that you're comfortable while you're doing so. So, Stephanie, I just got a new camera for Christmas. Can I bring that in the courtroom room with me? Yes, recording and picture taking is not permitted in the courtroom because it's very important to pay attention to the judge questions. Uh, you will be instructed by the court staff about the usage of electronic devices. You are more than welcome to bring something that will keep you occupied in between breaks, such as books, magazine, or a puzzle game. So I can't bring my camera, huh? You can, you just cannot use it inside the courtroom while the judge is on the bench. That seems fair. So Janice, uh, you told us about grand jury service and petit jury service. What happens if a juror who summons to jury service does not appear? Well, they can be held in contempt of court and a monetary fine can be imputed to them. However, we understand that mistakes happen. And what we want is people to come in and perform their jur jury service. So if you forgot to appear for your um, service, give us a call. We can reschedule you, postpone you. Whatever we need to do, we are definitely understanding that mistakes happen. Stephanie, uh, I need to park when I get down to jury service. Is there parking available for people like me when they have to report to the courthouse? Yes, there is parking available at all of our courthouses. Parking instructions are clearly indicated on your jury summons. In the Atlantic City location, parking is located on New York Avenue in the Atlantic, in between, I'm sorry, in New York Avenue in between Atlantic and Pacific Avenue. <clears throat> it's a five-story parking garage. Uh, jury management will validate your parking ticket before, um, before all jurors get in the car, they must show the attendant their parking ticket to make them aware they have been stamped by the court. So, okay, I've never been to the courthouse before. How do I know where to go once I get there? The instructions are clearly on each summons. Okay. So Janice, you talked about uh, potential fines, which you'll work with me, but I've been getting these phone calls uh, that I think may be a scam, and I've heard of friends who have got scammed in juries uh, in the recent news and in the past. So how does a potential juror know if a phone call is legitimate and coming from the court? In general, jury management does not make phone calls to potential jurors. We reach out to them via summons, possibly email if they've contacted us online. It is unusual for us to make phone calls. I don't want to say that it never happens. There are occasions, but you should reach out to me, the jury manager, to uh, make sure that it is indeed a phone call that originated from our office. Stephanie, why do jurors wear badges in the courtroom? Uh, prospective jurors and panel jurors mo must wear badges in order for them to be clearly identified from the public. It is important to to the process that no one discuss ongoing cases with jurors. If someone speak about the case with a jurer, the jurer must report that immediately to jury management or the judge. This information must be kept confidential, only discussed with court personnel. This is the reason why they wear a badge, so they can be identified from the public. So we talked about badges and uh, jurors in the courthouse. Um, is there anything else about jury that someone should know from your perspective, Stephanie? Mm. Is that a fun experience? It is. It is. Uh, we have approximately 504 full-time judiciaries employee 
in Vicinage 1, including 28 full-time judges. Okay. Ray, is it fun from your perspective? Absolutely. Uh, I have the opportunity to meet many different people, different work areas, different personalities. And I've, I see that a lot of people that come in, they are uh, anxious, often angry about having to serve on jury duty. But most of the time, by the time they leave, they're thanking us for a good experience. Janice, how about from your perspective? I would agree with Ray. Invariably, we have a positive feedback from our jurors. They find it to be a rewarding experience, and they get to see how our, just, our justice system works from the inside. Is there a payment for jury service, Janice? Yes, there is a payment for jury service, Jawad. And how much is that payment? That payment is $5 a day for the first three days and then $40 a day for each subsequent day. And that's only for petit jury. Grand jurors are paid $5 a day for each day that they meet. If I might add to that, there are certain individuals that are not paid for jury service. Yes. If they are employed by the state school systems or anything like that, because they are paid by their organizations, we do not pay them. So government employees like myself won't get paid for working at, at, during jury service? That's correct. I guess that seems only <laughs> fair. <laughs> uh, so Ray, what age, uh, if, is there, a jury, is there a jury age requirement? How old do I have to be to serve on a jury? And how old will I be to, when I don't have to serve on a jury anymore? You must be at least 18 years of age to serve, and at age 75, you are no longer required to serve. Uh, on the jury summons, there is a question that, in, that can indicate whether you are age 75 and you want to continue to serve. That does not mean you're not going to receive jury summonses. We cannot stop the summonses from coming to you, because there are plenty of people past the age of 75 that still want to serve, and we welcome them. But uh, you can wish to opt out at age 75. This is Meet the Court. I'm your host, Jawad Johnson. We'll be back with Janice, Ray, and Stephanie after this message. Welcome back to Meet the Court. I'm your host, Jawad Johnson. We're discussing jury service and its benefit to the community with the Vicinage One jury management team. So we've talked a bit about jury management, but before we go any further, I want to just get to know you. So Janice, we'll start with you. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and about uh, your role with the court. Okay, my name is Janice Headley. I've been with Vicinage One for a year and a half now in the role as jury manager. Prior to that, I worked at the administrative office of the courts as an administrative supervisor for the Superior Court Clerk's Office. I, um, I manage three different sites. I have an awesome team and we have a lot of fun. We meet a lot of interesting people every day. Our job is always different. We're always doing something um, that changes things up for us. And I am the assignment, I mean, I'm sorry, I am the designee of our assignment judge, the Honorable Julio Mendez. I work very closely with the judges in our vicinage to ensure that their jury needs are met. All in all, we're really a fun group of people to hang out with every day. So I said in the intro that uh, we were talking with the jury management team, but it seems like there's a lot more people than are sitting here on our panel. About how many jury staff would you say uh, are on in the counties? Um, it varies from county to county. I have 12 members of, of jury, but we also have three different locations to cover. Wow. So Ray, tell us a little bit about you and about your role with the court. Hi, uh, well, my name is Ray Sloginski. I'm a part of the jury management team for a vicinage one working in the Mays Landing Courthouse. I've worked for the judiciary for about 11 years now and I've enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, part of my responsibilities include attending the jurors when they arrive, assigning jurors to a judge and a trial, and then during the trials, uh, I, I assist the jurors however I can in the daily operations of the day. Stephanie. Tell us about your role with the court and a little bit about yourself. 
Hello, my name is Stephanie de Jesus Vasquez. I am a judiciary clerk to bilingual. I assist with preparing jurors for jury selection by processing their summons on upon them reporting. I prepare them for the judge for jury service. I have acted as a backup for the clerk to the grand jury. I also assist our Spanish speaking population. Thank you. So when jurors come to jury duty, um, and they know where to go and how to get there and what time to show up, but how do they know what to do? Have it Well, we do an orientation and we show them a film called You the Juror. Incidentally, I think it's really important to know that our Chief Justice also served as a juror as well as our Administrative Director. Um, it's important to know that court staff serves, police officers serve, all pe people from all walks of life serve on jury service. Um, if someone from the public needs to contact the uh, jury management team, where would they go to get the number? Is it online? Yes, it is online. Uh, where, what's the web address? It's uh, www.njcourts.com online.gov under the tab jurors. Okay. Um, so what other types of jury service are there? Well there's state grand jury and there's federal grand jury. State grand jury is um, at this time still handled at the vicinage level. That's where we have three prospective jurors that report to Trenton from Atlanta County and one prospective juror that reports to Trenton from Cape May County for grand, state grand jury selection, which is conducted in Trenton. Federal grand jury, that's outside of our jurisdiction. Okay, so I'm sure the viewing public wants to know, what are some of the perks of jury service? Are there any? Janice, I'll ask you first. Absolutely, there's perks. Well, as I said, you get to hang out with us all day, but we have microwaves, we have refrigerators, we serve, we have coffee and tea available to you, water available to you. It's a comfortable place to be. Um, you should feel at home there. Anybody else? Ray, yes. is the way they feel at home? They do. We do our best to make sure they're as, as comfortable as possible. You gotta understand that they are in a professional area and they have a very serious job to do, but we, we do our best to put them at ease, make them understand what their importance is, and to uh, help them however we can in many, in many areas. Uh, we have jurors, small example, where do I go for lunch? Well, we have plenty of places we can direct them to. In fact, there's even places in the courthouse where they can eat. Um, and we make sure that what their needs are are taken care of as the best as we possibly can. Stephanie, you work with the Spanish-speaking population. So in what ways do you seek to bridge the gap between the English language that's spoken by the majority of court users and the Spanish language spoken by some folks that are in the minority of speakers of the language? It's a pretty big gap. So how do you address it? By doing my best, my best um, helping them with whatever they need. If I need to walk them down the hall for any other um, issue, I will go beyond that line to help them to get what they need. All right. Um, so as far as what to wear, um, what should I wear and what shouldn't I wear to jury service? Well, you should absolutely dress business casual. Uh, be prepared for different climates in the courtroom. It could be very cold. It could be warm. Um, I. I recommend that you not, you can't wear a uniform, for instance, you, or carry a badge or wear a badge or not carry a badge, but wear a badge. And is that because the jurors are supposed to be seen as impartial? Absolutely impartial. Okay. Um, what shouldn't we wear, Ray? Is there any ideas of what I shouldn't be wearing to the courtroom? I kind of feel that uh, loud clothing or revealing clothing should not be worn. Right, uh, you want to be comfortable. Comfortable, right? business yes. casual is the key here, but make sure that you, you are going to feel comfortable during the day. You don't have to wear business shoes. If you're comfortable in sneakers, wear sneakers. We ask that you don't wear shorts. You know, again, that's part of, not part of business casual. T-shirts, 
be very selective in the type of t-shirts that you wear. Uh, just remember, you're in a public area, and there are people that get offended sometimes. Okay. So, Stephanie, one last question for you. When you're working with the Spanish-speaking population and you're going above and beyond and you're helping them with their, uh, with their needs, what are the typical types of questions that you get that you have to help them with? Um, why do I get this summons if I do not speak the language? Um, how do they want me to fill it out if it is not in Spanish? Uh, that's one of the typical questions they ask. Thank you. This is Meet the Court. I'm your host, Joao Johnson. We're just about out of time. I'd like to thank you, our viewing audience, for watching today. And I'd like to thank our guests for joining us. Goodbye for now.